Hail Dicelings and ready your quarantine because today we're going to talk about gaming in COVID-19. So um, today is the 17th as I film this. Uh, this is the first video I've done in a long time. I'm in New Hampshire now, um, which is part of the reason why I haven't been able to film. I just haven't had the facilities to do so. Uh, and now that I do, uh, it's unfortunate that this is going to be the first video back for the channel, but I've noticed in a lot of the communities that amongst the stuff with COVID-19 that there's a lot of new people inside our groups that are looking to see how they can play online. So um, this is just a really quick, no fancy stuff or anything like that, no backgrounds, just kind of explaining like how you can start playing online. The easiest way to play online that I have found is going to rely on you trusting in your players in the same way that players trust in you when you use a DM screen, which is any video call service. Um, these are very easy to set up. Uh, if you're doing one-on-one -on -one sessions, the best one I'd recommend is Zoom. Uh, if you were doing more than one-on-one -on -one sessions, you could consider Zoom as the pay account. I believe it's about $15 a month. I may be off on that number. Um, the quality is fantastic, uh, and if you decide to record, there's a lot of benefits that come with Zoom. But I'm going to assume that most of the people who are watching this are looking for like a two-week, three-week maybe tool so that their games can still continue amongst all the stuff while still being socially conscious and aware of our surroundings. Um, the second one that I would recommend, which is going to be the one that I typically will recommend in general, which is uh, Google Hangouts. Uh, it is still available for people to use online. Um, basically, when you open up a new tab in Chrome, uh, you go to your little Google drop down and there'll be a little icon for Hangouts. And if you click on that, it'll actually come up and you can send links and set up a video conference. It works exactly the way it used to, but it is a little harder to find than it used to be. Um, if you can't find it, honestly, the easiest thing to do is to Google Google Hangouts and you'll get a link to it. Um, you will need a Google account, but if you've ever signed up for a YouTube account, that is a Google account, or you have Gmail, you already have one, so very easy to set up. Um, outside of that, another one that has become a little bit more popular is StreamYard. Um, StreamYard is basically the same thing as what Hangouts is, uh, but it's all done um, cloud-based, and it's... Uh, a little bit more basic than what Hangouts is. Hangouts has a few integrated tools that could be used, but frankly, you don't need them. The reason I say that a virtual video conference is kind of the, the easiest option is because, frankly, you don't need to do any extra work. I hear a baby crying, so I'm going to pause this video and then we're going to come right back to it. Alright, I'm back. So, I might repeat myself here for a second but basically the whole reason that i say that um these virtual conference calls are probably one of the easiest and best ways to get yourself set up is because by now you probably have some trust inside your group uh they can roll dice they don't necessarily have to show their dice on camera you can just trust each other um because you guys are a gaming group and you're built upon that that trust at the table anyways um and if somebody cheats for two weeks is it really gonna kill your game i mean in the end they're only cheating themselves and that's kind of my opinion on that um if you would prefer or you have a more tactical game there are resources like virtual tabletops um the one that i will recommend the highest due to quarantine is uh, Roll20. Um, Roll20, it has a lot of really fancy, nice features in it, but it also is very user approachable. Um, you can either just use the map and the pen tool to draw your dungeons and people can drop in their tokens. Well, really the GM drops in the tokens and um, you can just move them around. Very basic function there. Um, or you could get a little bit more elaborate without really having that much experience and take a pre-drawn dungeon or map and throw it inside there on the map layer. And again, they put on their tokens, but it looks like you have like a grassy field or a pre-done dungeon. Uh, if you really want to get fancy, you could start putting in stats and tying them to the tokens and tracking your numbers inside there or even using the initiative tracker, but... It really depends on how much investment you want. Um, it's really a two-week process that we're looking at for quarantine and social distancing, so up to you really in the end. Um, 
The second program I'd recommend, and I recommend this a little bit more cautiously, is Fantasy Grounds. Fantasy Grounds is fantastic. However, there's a very high price point that comes with it. It does get you a lot of stuff that is more beneficial if you continue to play online. Um, but I probably wouldn't recommend that one. Um, there are other services available. Those are just the two that I have the most experience with. Um, and the two that I would probably... Uh, be more than comfortable giving my thumbs up to. Um, but like I said, uh, with Fantasy Grounds, there is a higher price point for entry. And then there's also, like, once you pay for access to the program, um, it's it's an added service that, like, you're basically going to buy your books twice. You'll buy them in physical copy or digital copy if you have a game that does digital and then on Fantasy Grounds, if your game is available, because Fantasy Grounds is limited on what games that it is compatible with, um, you will then buy that book digitally for Fantasy Grounds. So that's a little bit of an issue, in my opinion. Um, Roll20 supports a lot of different games and just is a little easier to work with, at least for me. Um, as far as if you want to get into Roll20 and don't know where to start. Um, Taking 20 is a really great channel for that. Um, he's got some very older videos, um, but Cody's got some some really good advice about like how to design uh, your layout and setup. Um, a lot of the things that I do in Roll20 are stuff that I've learned from Cody or even just playing with the program myself. Um, like nested macros are really handy and stuff like that. Um, I would definitely check out his guides. Uh, if you are looking for something a little bit more in-depth than that, I know that Steam has a virtual tabletop, which can be used to play actual board games as well as D&D. I have not used it myself. I've heard some mixed opinions about it. Um, basically, it's really cool, uh, and it feels like you are at literally a virtual table, like you have the VR set up like you are looking at a table, there's a book next to you, there's the dice, and you pick up the dice and you roll them. Um, but I don't know that much about it. Uh, you could definitely check it out and see if that's a good fit for you. Um, that would probably be the, the third option on my list. Um, but if you are uh, just looking for something to get by, I think Roll20 is still the best. Uh, and this is where people usually get into the what do I need to start doing a virtual session and frankly you don't need a lot. Um, I have a bigger setup but if you see my channel over time I've kind of evolved my setup. Um, the thing that I would recommend is a headset for players and GMs alike. Uh, try not to use your speakers unless you have very nice speakers and a nice microphone. The microphone will typically pick up the speakers and create what's called bleed, which means that the people who are listening to your microphone can also hear your speakers. Um, it's incredibly annoying. It usually ends up being in a very high pitch, sharp whine sound, and it's not great for you or the other people on the other end. Um, if you ever feel, or if you ever come across that, the quickest thing to get rid of that is just turn your volume all the way down um, and then fix it from there. Sometimes a microphone like mine I can have my speakers on. They don't need to be super loud, but if they get very loud, I'll still get bleed and stuff like that. Um, so I typically recommend like earbuds uh, and, or um, just a really any smartphone will work just fine too. Um, typically, I don't like smartphones with uh, virtual tabletops because they're a little slower. They have the capability to do so. Same thing with tablets, um, but interacting with it is slow and so it slows down the game. Uh, if you were just doing a video service, phones work just fine. Um, as far as your microphone, any microphone will do. What I what I typically recommend is for if you're just trying out virtual tabletops, if you don't already have a gaming headset, because I know a lot of us do play video games and stuff like that, my recommendation is to get yourself like a $20 Logitech little headphone microphone all in one type piece or use the headphones that come with like your Samsung phones or your iPhones that they have the three millimeter adapter that can go directly to your computer and function both as your microphone and your headset. Um, typically, most computers, you just plug that into the microphone jack and it will work for both of them. However, you might have stereo or sorry, you might have mono rather than stereo. So only one earbud will work, typically the one that's attached to the microphone. 
Um, if that happens, unfortunately, that's what you've got with what you've got. Um, but it's not a bad option. Um, Bluetooth uh, speakers and headsets, if your computer is compatible, those are great. Um, there's a tiny, tiny bit of latency that may be noticed inside the video, but again, it's not a huge deal. It's just you and your friends don't feel pressure to put on a high quality game because chances are you're not trying to build a YouTube audience. So who cares? Um, and then from there, if you want to have a web camera, I will tell you that the one that I use is a great camera, but it is not necessary. Um, any camera will do if you want to have one. Uh, if you are playing on a laptop that happens to have a camera built in, use that sucker. It's fine. Uh, it's no big deal. If, um, if you just want to do voice recording and you don't necessarily care about video, um, there's another service that I kind of completely forgot about. It's Discord. Discord, you can do video, but you can also do voice and you can put a dice roller inside of it. So it's actually pretty handy. Uh, a lot of people are familiar with Discord. And the sound quality I found is a little bit better than the built-in sound quality to Roll20. So let's talk about um, some built-in tools that can kind of help us out since we're talking about Roll20's built-in. Uh, originally, Roll20 got a bad rap because it had a very poor uh, video and uh, voice service built into it. It has become better. It is still not the best for recording quality. So like if you wanted to do a YouTube show, it is not the best option. However, if you're just playing with your friends, the built-in video and, and audio functions in Roll20 are great. They work fine. The, you don't have to worry about it. So um, some people will recommend that you run Google Hangouts and then Roll20 for your maps. Just I recommend using one program, save your computer the resources, uh, and don't bother running the second one unless you're actually looking to record and you need a better quality recording than what Roll20 is going to give you. Um, Roll20, you can turn on the cameras or you can turn them off. Personally, what I like to do is, because there's like three different sizes, there's a large, medium, and small. I'll typically put everybody's camera on small if I'm using just Roll20, and then I'll run my audio and video through there. Um, but because typically everything that I do is recorded, I typically do the two two setup where uh, Google Hangouts is my primary uh, video service and then uh, Roll20. I actually typically don't show on the channel super often. Sometimes I do. Um, but usually I use Roll20 as kind of like a GM binder in a way that I can show players. So I have like locations inside there. I have NPC names. Uh, and basically I use it kind of like a, like a wiki almost. Um, there are some things that are on the GM side that the players cannot see, which is a handy point for Roll20, um, but for the most part, it's pretty open. A lot of the things that are in the Roll20 are accessible by my players pretty much right away. Um, some concerns that I've heard people have uh, is, like, if I get my players in Roll20 or Fantasy Grounds or any of the virtual tabletops, what's going to happen if they try and access the campaign while I'm not there? Are they going to be able to see my stuff? Um, no, they're not. Um, basically, each one of these programs typically has a GM layer or GM tool or like something to hide that stuff from the players. Um, even if they get into your Roll20 or your Fantasy Grounds while you're gone, they will not be able to see anything that you have not given them permission to. So if you are building a map for a dungeon, all you need to do is make sure that the players are not on that map. Easy enough. Um, what I typically like to do is when I build a new campaign in Roll20, I will make one screen be my loading screen, if you will. Basically, it'll say the campaign's name. Um, it's a blank, blank page. It's typically where I go if I don't have players that are interacting with a map. Um, it'll... Typically, I'll try and find a picture that kind of like is what the campaign's about or at least matches theme, and then I'll plant the characters on that page. And if I need the characters to be on something else, I will use the drop down and move them on something else that I want them on. Um, Fantasy Grounds works kind of similar. Basically, players, again, only access what you give them access to, and if you take away that access or you move them to something else, then they only get access to what you're giving them. So um, just be mindful of that. Um, virtual tabletop, I can't speak to how that works because I'm not familiar with it. Um, if you want to explore that avenue, please use the comment section and let any other viewers know. 
um, what your experience with the virtual tabletop through stream through steam is um, so another thing that I wanted to toss out is uh, I mentioned that it's the 17th uh, this month until let me just double check the date on this real quick it is until uh, do, 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 April 20th actually so you have pretty much a whole month uh, Fantasy Grounds basic, or excuse me, not Fantasy Grounds. Fantasy Age basic rulebook is free from Green Ronin, um, so definitely check that out if you don't have a game to play and would like to just get into something. Um, D and D is probably where most people are coming into the game, into the hobby, but I know that my channel is a mixed audience, so whatever you play, feel free to give it a shot. Um, if you guys have any questions about how to do your setup or things like that, um, I cannot promise that I can get back to you super fast, but please feel free to reach out to me. Um, Facebook Messenger is probably the easiest, um, and you can use my name down here to find me on Facebook. Um, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I have two very small children under five. Um, they keep me pretty busy. I'm the stay-at-home dad, uh, and things have obviously become a little bit more difficult with my wife working from home now um, so uh, I will get back to you as soon as I can but um, feel free to reach out to those communities that you may have seen this video in a lot of those people do know how to do this stuff and will be willing to help you out um, and if you are taking this opportunity to start recording um, welcome to these groups um, start making friends now because this is a great opportunity to catch people who are missing their regular games and are looking for something in between I know that um, should I get the opportunity I will be running something myself during uh, the quarantine period uh, if I am able to anyways thanks guys for tuning in I don't want to make this any longer than it is I just kinda wanted to make like a quick introduction video to some aspects that I've heard come up some things there if you want to get into recording um, and doing a YouTube channel, I do have an Amazon um, list of suggested items. If you reach out to me, I can send it to you. Um, basically, gear that I think is uh, anywhere from midline to entry level, as far as like getting you set up, as far as like recording devices and things like that. Um, I've got all that listed and I can tell you what, what order you should consider buying things in and stuff like that, but um, this video is mostly focused towards people who are looking at this as a temporary solution for a couple of weeks. Thanks again for um, tuning in and uh, I will be doing more videos a little bit more consistently and uh, hopefully in the next few months my background will change and I'll go back to the normal setup that you guys have seen uh, for the last year or so, uh, unfortunately right now with one of the children learning how to sleep. I don't have an office because that's his space now. Um, but once he is ready to move into the room with his brother, I'll have my office back and be able to set up and do full recordings and stuff like that like I used to. Thanks again, guys, and have a great night.